All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and do um, a little bit of a, a, a river canoe training safety program. We're gonna go through some of the steps that we're gonna be doing today, in, um, and we're just gonna go over some of the safety um, things that we need to worry about, okay? One of the things we're gonna be talking about is reading a river. That is something that's really important. In today's, um, what we're gonna be starting with is we're actually working in a cove. So the water's gonna be nice and calm and quiet. And we can already see that from the shore. And we have already talked to um, one of the operators here where we rent our canoes and we've already determined the river conditions and how things are going. And we do know that there's the possibility of the river coming up, um, not extremely quickly, but it could raise because there is a dam above us for um, power generation. So if they needed more power, they may actually release more water. So we're already aware of the conditions that we're having. The water is actually lower than normal because we've been in such dry conditions and it should be a very gentle um, paddling situation today, okay? But w when we're reading a liver, the river, we want to be able to watch for several things. We want to watch for ripples in the water. That could be because the, sh the water is very shallow and it's going over the bottom, the rough surface. There could be something buried under, not buried, but underneath the surface of the water, a tree, a limb, uh, debris, rocks, so there could be things underneath that. So we want to be careful and we want to make sure we're wa um, watching for that. So there, again, this could be those rocks underneath, those fallen trees that we can't see as we're going down. So if you're seeing ripples, you need to be very careful with that and be prepared to back paddle or turn and get away from that situation so that you don't tip over. So if we see something like that, since we're going to be not so far from each other, we should tell everybody. Yeah, we can definitely, um, we don't want to yell, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in etiquette later on. But yes, if you see danger, or you think there's danger, yes, you should definitely let everybody know. All right? There's things that are called strainers. I don't think we're going to have to worry about that today because of the river we're on, and we'll be out in a little bit of, away from the shore. But what a strainer is, is a low-hanging branch, all right, something that's coming over. And it could be wires, it could be... Um, there are wires sometimes that cross rivers that, who knows, are not maintained, could have been broken, um, it could have been a fallen tree. Um, it can be anything that's really low that you would probably have to go underneath, okay? Even if you can safely go underneath and not really move because it's still five feet in the air, but some of those lower branches you may actually have to um, duck to get underneath them. And if you want to duck to get underneath something because you don't have much choice but to go underneath it, you actually want to do more of a limbo type of duck. Because if you're leaning backwards, you will actually be able to see that object, all right, versus if you were leaning forward and your head was pointing down, you may not know what's coming up, all right, especially if there's something, a blind spot. And then if you tried to lean sideways, you run the risk of tipping the boat over. So doing the limbo is the best way to go underneath a strainer. Um, we do want to worry about wildlife and what do we want to worry about for dangerous things up here. In terms of water, there's not going to be much. Northeast Massachusetts, there are no dangerous water snakes. There are no water moccasins. There is the, th um, a lot of people have that myth that they are here, but they are not. Um, but we do have a couple of snakes. If we're on shore, there is the timbal rattlesnake and the copperhead. Um, based on the reports that I've had from one of um, the experts in this area, this area we should not run into that scenario at all. So if there is something out there, again, we don't want our dogs going to, get to a snake because even if they were to get bit by a snake, it is still considered a very dirty bite and it would still need to be seen by a veterinarian. But we shouldn't have that problem. The area that we could run into today is snapper turtles. Um, snapper turtles can get very large and for some of the smaller dogs here and even the, the, our, the larger dogs, if they were to get a toe or a pad, they could literally um, amputate. All right, they are strong enough. Um, so that's the one thing we do have to worry about in this river. So is, are you talking about them in the water or are you talking about them on shore? If they're on shore, I mean, one, they move very slow. Um, but again, if your dog was to go up there and sniff and the snapping turtle was to get their nose, <laughs> that's not a good thing. But you do run the risk of them being in the water as well. Okay. Um, the other thing is we do want to keep our dogs away from all wildlife. Again, talking with the... Um, the caretaker here, we already know the island is off limits because it is actually a preserve type area. And we've already seen out there today that there's a lot of waterfowl on the water. So we need to make sure we, we respect that fact. And if by chance our dogs were to start barking at them, we want to try to control our dogs. And try, if we had to get further distance away from that wildlife, if we're having that issue. Because one, we don't want our dogs barking, it's rude. And it could also upset the, the wildlife. Um, 
if you were to fall out of out onto the boat, oh, I'm sorry. If you were to fall out of the boat and onto the water, you really don't want to try to stand up initially. You want to because if you're in water again in this scenario we have very calm water so we shouldn't have that much of a problem but if you were in um, faster moving water and your foot was to get stuck and it may actually get lodged under a rock it get lodged underneath a tree the water pressure could actually get to the point where you can't physically release your foot there's that much water pressure all right so the best scenario to do is if you fall out of the boat try to kind of float on your back all right put your feet up in, into the until you know your surroundings you're comfortable and then you can slowly come down again this is not fast moving water so we shouldn't have that issue but you do want to be careful there especially if you were in a faster moving current okay um, and then in, in this case you would either swim or float to the shore all right everybody will have their life preservers with them in Massachusetts it's not mandatory in a canoe to wear them um, but you do want to make sure you have them very close to you um, you would not really ever want to canoe down a new river with your dog. Um, you really should canoe um, the river first and then you can bring your dog. Um, this is a new river for us, but we've done our research on this. We've, we've talked to the people in the area. We've visually seen the river and we know that we're going to be going down a very quiet area. But if you were doing small streams, uh, you never know. Even if you did it six months ago, there could be now trees or something down that you wouldn't know about. So even if you do canoe at first, you always do have to be careful. Um, river classifications, we're going to be in a class one today, guys, but there is from one to six. All right? So again, you would want to know that before you come down. Um, and realistically, you would probably never be doing a one or probably only a one or a two with your dogs. Um, I mean, we're not enjoying this. It's, we're not doing this for competitions. Or go ahead. So one means calm, and six means rapids. Yes. Like the worst rapids. Worst. I mean, it comes down to you have large drops, and okay. again, that's not something we would ever do with our dogs. <laughs> At least I hope nobody would ever do it with their dogs. <laughs> All right. Um, as you can see today, we're actually going to have three canoes. I think there's about six people, and I'm not even sure. We got one, two, three, four, five dogs. But we would never want to um, river canoe alone. Okay. Even in the area we're going to be today, there's going to be a lot of boats out there, power boats. There's probably going to be canoes, kayaks. Um, this other person who sees you fall out or doesn't see you fall out, but all of a sudden you're kind of splashing around because you can't swim and you're actually drowning, they may think you're playing. And it may not actually come to your assistance. Um, if you're boating with other people, then we all know each other and we say, hey, that's not right and we can actually give aid. So you want to be careful there. So never go boating alone. You should actually bring your cell phone with you um, or have some sort of communications, but put it in a plastic container that is watertight. They do sell those. There's water, all different types of waterproof containers that you can use. And you should have some sort of ID on you um, and for your dog. In, yeah, we'll go into other safety tips. So never tie yourself or your dog to the boat. I mean, if something was to happen and they, the boat was to tip over, you or the dog could get trapped underneath. All right, no glass items. You should have a waterproof ID for you and your dog. And your items should be on you or your dog. Again, if one, something was to happen and we lost contact, and then you want to have to be able to find your dog. Do, does everybody here have their dogs microchipped? Yep. Okay, so all our dogs are microchipped, so that's a very good thing, okay? Um, you do want to secure your items to the canoe. You can tie them to them, bungee them, just so that if you were to f tip over, you're not going to be searching for all the stuff that, you've, that was part of the canoe, <laughs> so you should secure it. Um, you're going to check your dog's pads often. In the water, just like your hands and your, your, your own skin, it can soften up their pads, so you do want to be careful with them, and you should check them. We should always carry a first aid kit with us, and um, we do have one that we will have with us. Uh, never dive or jump into a river unless you know that it's 10 plus feet deep for safety reasons. Do not take more dogs than you can handle safely. Um, for the most part, we are going to have one dog per person. I will have two dogs with me, but both of my dogs have been canoeing on many occasions, and they'll do very well with me. All right, make sure your dog can get back into the canoe if they should fall or jump out. That is one of the advantages of having um, the two dogs, the two smaller dogs, actually are wearing vests, and they both have handles on them. So you guys would be able to easily pick up your dogs. The two larger dogs would, or the three larger dogs, would be harder. 
Um, if you're going to do that, you should grab from the top of the collar, all right? And just, but you want to be able to, when you try to pull them up from the boat, you want to pull from underneath because it's going to be a lot harder for the um, collar to come off, okay? Etiquette. We want to make sure, as always, as dog scouts, that we respect the property of others, keep the dogs off developed property, and make sure we clean up after our dogs. And this actually goes for humans too. We are going to be out on a river. Uh, we may have the urge and need to go. We should either be bagging or burying any of our human waste. Okay? There should be no splashing. We should stay quiet. Again, no yelling between the boats, which we kind of mentioned, um, and no yelling at our dogs. <laughs> All right? Obey the laws. Be courteous. We want to make sure we leave no trace. All right? This is a principle we should always live by. And we don't want to har harass or disturb the wildlife. Some of the equipment that we should have today is traveling light is best. We don't need a lot of stuff out there. We will be bringing some water and some lunch because um, we will be stopping and letting the dogs play out there. Uh, life jacket for us and possibly the dog. Our first aid kit. You can use a pad or a mat for the bottom of the boat if the, it's more comfortable for your dog. You should have a tie off line. So basically, so if we were to put the canoe on the shore or something, we can actually tie the canoe to the shore so it won't take off on us. You may need sunscreen or bug spray. Um, again, being out there in the water, the reflections, the sun actually can be um, provide more UV rays and more chance of us burning. So you do want to be careful there. Who knows what with the with the bugs out there? And then again, plenty of drinking water. Does have anybody have any questions on this today? Cool. Thank you, guys. Uh, we're gonna get ready to hop to the shore and have some fun with our dogs. Thank you.